Hey guys, welcome back. As the title suggests, we are replacing the master cylinder on my Forester with a master cylinder from an STI. This came off of a 2007 STI. It was uh, T-boned, wrecked the whole passenger side of it. And uh, a lot of the components that I wanted were spoken for, but I was able to get this. And the reason I want to do the upgrade with this, and I'll show you if I can, might be kind of hard to see, but so as you can see, it's an OEM STI master cylinder, and that said 1 and 1 16th, which is uh, roughly right around 26.98, let's call it 27 millimeters. That's the diameter of the piston inside of it that pushes the brake fluid down to your brake calipers. Now, the stock one that you will find on the Forester XT, um, also on the WRX, is a 25 millimeter piston, uh, which is about 1 inch. Now, the difference between 26, nine, let's just call it 27, 26.9875 is what it breaks down to, inch and a sixteenth to one inch. So we'll just call it 27 millimeters to 25 millimeters. Two millimeter difference, doesn't sound like a whole lot, but we're talking about the surface area of the piston that's in the master cylinder, and the surface area of the STI one is uh, about 572 square millimeters, whereas the uh, Forester one is about 490 square millimeters. Difference of about uh, 9.2 uh, square millimeters. So if you want to look at the inside of a 9 millimeter socket, that much more surface area. Again, doesn't sound like a whole lot, but when you're moving hydraulic fluid, that's a lot of extra pressure, a lot of extra movement and that's going to decrease the amount of pedal movement, pedal travel, to get the same amount of braking. So we're improving the brake response on the Forester. So we're gonna get started. I've already pulled all the wheels off. I know you don't have to, but I'll explain why here in just a minute. Um, I've also pulled the uh, intercooler off, got things ready, so it'll just speed this up for us. I've spent the last few days every day shooting all my fittings under the hood with some penetrating oil, so they should come off pretty easily. Um, also, I picked up, and I've already got brake fluid on it, uh, it's a Dorman uh, brake bleeder kit, uh, part number right there, 13911. I'll put a link to this on Amazon down below, you can pick it up less than 10 bucks. Really good investment because it just screws right into the brake lines, uh, the brake line fittings on the master cylinder. Face them back inside and you can bleed out your master cylinder, bench bleed it is what they call that. We will do that here in just a minute. So uh, let me show you why I pulled the wheels off. So about a month ago I did the upgrade to the four pot brake calipers in the front, two pot in the rear and brand new pads, brand new rotors. Uh, the rotors, when I was finishing up the last video, I had gotten the wrong ones for the front, but as you can see, I have since gotten the correct ones and uh, brand new pads and everything in. They have been bedded. I've been running them for a little over a month and I've been really happy with how it feels. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the brand new pads out and I've got these older ones right here. If you can see that, they're almost wore out. And I'm gonna put these back in its place as well as the rear ones, which you can see are wore pretty good as well. I'm going to put them back in, and I am going to step on the brake, which is going to squeeze the old pads back up to the rotor and push a lot of the fluid out of the master cylinder down into the, the calipers. Now, the reason I want to put these old pads back in and push as much fluid as I can into the calipers is because when you disconnect the lines, some of that fluid is going to come out and you'll end up with an air bubble. Now, if you bleed the system the traditional way, trying to push that air bubble all the way through the lines and out at the calipers, there's a chance that it could get caught up at the ABS system. And I'm going to try and do something a little different, and if this makes sense, when you put all that extra fluid in the calipers, you replace the master cylinder, you end up with an air bubble right there, short distance away. When you compress the pistons in the calipers again, you're pushing all that fluid back into the master cylinder. So by doing that, you are pushing the air back into the master cylinder where it will escape the system and you're gonna be air free. 
theoretically. We're going to see if that works. Hopefully it does. Uh, if not, I may end up taking it to the Subaru dealership and have them hook it up to their power bleeder and you know do the whole ABS thing, but I don't think it's going to come to that. So I'm at the point now, I'm just going to put those old pads in, step on the brake to get as much fluid down into the calipers as I can. Then we are going to bench bleed the new master cylinder that's going on and swap them out and then we're going to compress those and get the air back out. Now you may wonder why I'm going with a 2007 STI master cylinder. I did uh, see the car, it only had 60,000 miles on it. Master cylinders are good for a long, long time. They, you can run 300,000 miles or more, never having to replace it or rebuild it. So being that low of a mileage, um, it doesn't make any sense to rebuild it because I only paid $25 for it. So I got a really good price. Uh, a rebuild kit from Subaru runs you right around $85 is the cheapest that I've seen them. So if you want to add those together, you're looking at, uh, what's that, about $110, $120. A brand new one, I've seen them running for about $145. So if you're looking at spending $110 to rebuild a used one, you may as well spend the extra $35, buy a brand new one, not even have to deal with it. And of course there are remanufactured ones by companies such as Centric or Ray Bestis. Uh, I found a Centric one. I really like Centric products. I've been using their uh, pistons for calipers and their rotors for years and never had any problems with them. So uh, I'm sure you could get a uh, Centric master cylinder which would be around $85. Um, which is the, the price of the rebuild kit. I'm going to drop a link for one down in the description. It's one that uh, I would recommend. Um, but right now, we're going to go uh, get started. All right, so you can see I pulled the intercooler out, and that's because I'm going to have to come in through here to get a hold of the uh, master cylinder and pull it out right through the opening where the intercooler would have been. So these are 12 millimeter bolts to the brake booster, and these are a 10 millimeter that go right here to the brake line, and there's another one. Hopefully I can get in the right spot. You can see it down on the uh, right side or left side of the uh, engine bay, right up against the strut tower. Pull those loose. I should be able to get the whole master cylinder out. And of course, we got the brake booster line we're gonna disconnect too. That'll give us a little extra room. So uh, first thing I'm gonna do is get those loosened up and then we will bench bleed the other one and be ready to swap them over. So these are 12 millimeter and the brake line on this side is really tight to it. So if I use a short uh, 12 millimeter and a couple of extensions, I can go underneath it 
and get right on it. Break those loose. Same with this one. I don't need that many sockets, I guess, or extensions. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna unplug this, slide that back out of the way. Now, as far as the brake lines go, they're a 10 millimeter, and I didn't have a 10 millimeter flare nut wrench. So I took a combination wrench and I cut a groove into the back of it that'll just fit around the line. Uh, it's not focusing very well, but I promise you there's a groove there. And uh, that is going to allow me to get into those fittings. So we're going to break these loose. And they shouldn't be very tight because it's a pressure fitting. Oh, beautiful. Came right loose. Try the other one. And I did pull this bracket loose as well to give me a little wiggle room here. Okay, came loose. Good. So we're just going to leave those snugged up for now. And we're going to go bench bleed the uh, new master cylinder. Now this kit comes with a bunch of uh, different sized fittings and then some hose. So we just got to figure out which fittings we need to fit in there and uh, we'll get going. So the other one looks like it might be this one. Nope. Bigger. Nope. Smaller. There we go. So we got our two fittings. We'll grab our two pieces of hose. I'm just going to slide on. And then just stick into here. Same with the other one. Now we grab a screwdriver and brake fluid. Filled it pretty close to the top. Now the plunger on the back, you just push on that and it will start releasing the air through. You can see air bubbles, maybe not, I can. Alright, so that's clean. So we're going to leave it sitting just like this. Get the other one off and real quick pull these fittings, throw it on and get the uh, lines hooked back up. I'm going to crack these so they're not tight. That'll be my first step so I know I can spin them off. I'm going to start with the harder one, I think. The trick is to not drop it.
Okay, uh, I'm going to get some paper towel underneath there real quick. This way any fluid I spill should be able to catch it all. Alright, now I think i go for the harder one first. It's actually turning out pretty easy. I'm surprised. That one's disconnected. That one's still tight. And I'm kind of not surprised that this one's got a little more pressure because facing straight down it can have a little junk that builds up in it. Cylinder is out. Get the new one. Come on, there we go. It's kind of started, so let's get this one in place. Let me, uh, I'm going to get one of these bolts. What did I do with them? Right there. I'm going to get one of these started on so it's pulling the, taking the pressure off the lines. Tighten those down. Now we will work on tightening these in. Again, it shouldn't take a whole lot of pressure because these are a uh, compression fitting. Okay, I think we're good. Wipe up anything I spilled around here. We're going to put a clean rag underneath here and uh, I'm going to go through and swap the brake pads back out which will compress the pistons and push all the fluid back in here and if I see any wet spots then I know I've got a leak and I've got to check for that again. So uh, I'm not going to record putting the other pads back in. I'll just come back here when we are checking for the leaks. All right so here's the moment of truth. So it's dry. I'm going to put it back underneath and I'm going to go step on the brake pedal, push all the pads back into position. And because uh, that did bring it up way above the max line, which tells me that it worked. It did push the fluid back in here. So that should have pushed all my air out.
All right, so I pushed real hard on that pedal a couple times. I don't see any leaks. I'm sitting right at my max level, so it's like perfect. So uh, we're going to put this all back together and go for a drive. Wow, major difference. Wasn't, it's hard to show you, but it uh, wasn't a whole lot of pressure on that pedal at all, and it was breaking. Uh, so really happy with the results. Well, that's one more project on the Forester out of the way. Uh, not sure what's coming up next, but stay tuned. I might have uh, some more videos coming up soon. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.